In this week's episode of Sailing Melody, Andy builds a new bowsprit, we get soaked on a wild rib ride, and we put up a new ceiling in the pilot house. I have included the timings in the descriptions below, just in case you want to skip ahead to the fun stuff. I'm Andy. I'm Melissa. And I'm Jack. And together we're working on restoring our sailing yacht. Some of you might think we're crazy taking on the challenge of restoring this boat and creating a life less ordinary. And we're sure there will be blood, sweat and tears, but it'll all be worth it when we embark on our epic adventure around the world. There's a scrappy old bowsprit platform here that's come off the boat, so we've got to rebuild it. And as you've seen, I've got most of the parts together for it. Let's just have a quick look at what we've got. So. There's the piece of tubing on the underneath which is completely perished. This is the chain plate and you can see from the wear mark where the forestay was attached on so that's fine I need to make some measurements of that. These two holes were for the two anchor rollers. I'm thinking I may actually just keep one anchor roller on the front on this side put an extendable bowsprit for the spinnaker. We'll see about that. These mounting holes are for the uh, the push bit, uh, the pulpit rail. Um, so let's uh, let's trace this onto some paper and uh, make some measurements from it. So what I'm trying to do here is establish the, the key components of this setup, which are this, this angle and lengths here where it will attach to the boat um, and the distance from that point to the actual bowsprit uh, attachment, the chain plate attachment. So I'm kind of breaking it down into its main components. And what we've basically got is the, the tube which is going to sleeve inside the old tube, like so. I don't know if that's coming up on video. Um, that's, that's one piece. Then attached to that is the stainless steel chain plate, which goes in the top, and then the one on the underneath for the bob stay. And that will be one piece of construction. The, pl the actual platform to stand on is a separate piece of construction. And I could weld it to the bob stay, uh, to the bowsprit, but I don't think I will. I think I'll find some other way of attaching it mechanically so that we can take it off to do repairs or maintenance or change it or what have you down the line. But the structural stuff is the, is the actual bowsprit and chain plate attachment. And then the other side thing to consider is how and where am I gonna fit my anchor roller, roller or rollers to this. Um, so I'm gonna go and fetch the anchor. very much seeing me think on my feet here because um, I haven't got this kind of planned out and sort of making it up as I go along. Here's our new anchor. It's not new, it's second hand. This is a 25 kilo Lumar Delta. Uh, it's overrated for the boat but that's what I want. So what I want to do next is I want to figure out what angle I need to make the sides of this platform from. I don't like this original shape, I think it was a bit ugly. Uh, and I want to use some stainless steel tubing to make a border from this back corner here to the front, to the nose, with a piece across the nose like this, but still leaving enough room for the anchor, uh, the aperture for the anchor to come through. I've just got back from going down the road to see Chris, who's got a chop saw because cutting these kind of angles on with a handsaw and uh, the hand grinder isn't really possible. But here you go. This is what we're looking at. So these angles are now pretty much cut. Uh, they're just positioned on the piece of paper there, but you can see the way that it's gonna work. First things first, I've got to um, prep the edge of these pipes. I've got to put a 45 degree chamfer on those so that I get good weld penetration with the stick welder. This is stainless pipe, by the way. I'm sure you knew that. Critical thing about prepping stainless pipe, brand new flap disc every time, so it's not contaminated with any nasties from, from working on mild steel. OK, 
okay so I'm really pleased with this the prep is nearly there I might just do a little shade more on the angle prep on that before I actually start welding and the other thing I've got to do is cut the late the length the, these down to the right length and put the right angle on the bottom um, the uh, chop saw uh, that Chris has down the road wouldn't do that angle so I'm going to have to do that by hand but these are the critical ones because these are the ones that have got to marry up properly but I'm really pleased with that I think that's uh, I think that's looking really nice oh there we are there we are yeah perfect cut this down to 1270 1270 mil and the bottom end has got to be an angle of 30 degrees I think let me check that I'm pretty sure that's 30 degrees Of course, if I had a piece of box section big, big enough, I could put the angle on the box section, sleeve it over the top of this uh, and use that as a guide. But I don't have a piece of box section big enough to encase this. So it is the way it is. There is a mathematical way of doing it. And there's these guys uh, I've been watching on the Internet. This is one fella. He's got an amazing channel. And he does all this kind of complicated stuff. And um, I was looking at that last night thinking, oh, that looks really. Uh, and then as more I looked at it, I thought, yeah, my math's not that good. So bear in mind, this uh, is going to have a foot welded to it anyway, and it's going to get cut again. I'm just cutting this to um, an approximate right angle and right length. Um, I'll be I'll be amazed if this um, fits the boat perfectly, but that's fine. <laughs> And there you go, five minutes or less than that, two minutes with the with a flat wheel to tidy up, tidy it up. Oh, that'll be fine. It might be a fraction of a degree out. This that's that's fine. I'm perfectly happy with that. So what I want to do now, of course, is replicate that on to the side, and here is how I'm going to do it. Um, so yesterday I was really struggling with the stick welder uh, and just getting nowhere with it. Uh, uh, as you know by now, I'm not the best stick welder in the world. And this is very, this is thin walled stainless tubing. Stainless gets hot pretty quickly and it's quite difficult for me to handle with my level of skill. Uh, so what I did in the end was I went over to weld gas and I bought the necessary bits and pieces to weld stainless with the, MIG, uh, with the MIG welder instead. And I'm much happier with the results. I've still got a little bit more to do today. Uh, well, I've got a lot more to do today, but um, I'm quite pleased with the way this is turning out. Look, that's, uh, that's okay. There's more, more sort of work to do shaping this and making it really pretty um, or as pretty as I can. Uh, but I'm much, much happier doing this with the MIG welder, even though it's cost a little bit to convert, you know, to get the stainless wire and the bits and pieces necessary. So the next thing I've got to do is weld a nice little step, a nice little piece across the top front of here, and then a couple of pieces wherever I'm going to put the anchor roller. That's probably not a bad thing to do next, actually, is get the anchor roller out and figure out where that's going to go. Here it is. Here's our um, old anchor roller. There's actually a pair of them. Um, they're on stainless brackets. They all need cleaning up. Okay, so sort of mocking this up as I go along. 
<laughs> I'm mucking it up as I go along. It's probably more like it. Um, I don't need to cut that roller down. I don't think, because if I mount it there, the anchor, I've got this set on some concrete blocks just to give it the, the right height, but the anchor will sit nicely over this roller uh, and I can get um, a, you know, a pin through here to, to restrain it, to stop it from chatting around. So I'll make the slot for the anchor come up to here like this. Okay, so where are we up to? Well, I've, um, I've plonked a bit of scrap timber on here. Um, some uh, I've got some spare sort of Sapelia Roco sort of stuff. This is too thin to use for the actual boards, but it gives you an idea. Uh, I'm not quite sure what design I'm going to go for for the wood layout here, but we've got the stainless frame, we've got the structure underneath, we've got our anchor roller. I will probably put another support down the side and one across here. A couple of diagonals at this end coming from the centre here out to here, so that uh, it kind of just gives more... Uh, points for us to uh, bolt this uh, timber to. So we decided after all this work this year um, that it was time to take a break and what better excuse than Jack's 10th birthday weekend. We managed to keep this as a complete surprise and Jack had no idea that his big brother and sister were coming or we were going to stay in this stunning cottage in the foothills of Snowdonia. I would highly recommend this place. It's called Brinteg Holiday Park. The staff are fantastic. The house was absolutely stunning. And we were even lucky enough to be there to watch the fireworks over the lake. After our wonderful first night in the cottage, um, we took Jack on <laughs> this amazing rib ride on the Menai Straits. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to one of our patrons that um, made this possible. You know who you are. Thank you so much. We really enjoyed passing this boat as we thought it looked a bit like Melody. So if you're in North Wales and this looks like your idea of fun, um, then I'd certainly recommend Sea Wake um, in Anglesey. Um, it was really amazing. The weather was atrocious. It was blowing 30 knots of wind, So, but I think that just added to the experience. It was really fun. Definitely recommend them. After a quick dry off um, and some lunch, we headed to Bounce Below, uh, which is in a place called Blenna Fistiniog. Um, it's actually a trampoline park below ground in an old slate quarry. Um, Emily and Stephen and Jack took part of this while well, Andy and I drank coffee, but it looked like great fun. So there you go, I've just come and done a test fit of the bow sprit platform. 
Um, the piece of tubing that I've got there is actually a piece of plastic drain pipe, which is exactly the right diameter. But the platform looks good from there. Let's see what it looks like from down below. That's what it looks like. So obviously this piece of piping is going to be cut down flush with the end uh, and capped. But that's going to be the construction. So you can see the, the new pipe goes inside the old one. And uh, that assembly fits just nicely onto where the old one used to be. Smashing, quite pleased with that. Oh, that looks good. Same. So Andy's just made a mock-up. Well, he hasn't made a mock-up. He's made the stainless steel um, platform, um, but we've used a bit of PVC um, pipe for the bit that goes into the bowsprit. Here you go. So if you're wondering what's going on viewers, we're actually, uh, it's dark outside, like dark, dark, 5.15 p.m. Um, in the Northern Hemisphere in Northern Wales and it's dark, dark. So we've got the lights on, so this is probably dreadful footage, but we are putting up these uh, laths, the timbers uh, framework in the ceiling of the pilot house um, so that we can then start thinking about putting the panelling back up, which will be uh, tomorrow's job. But we need to get the laths uh, screwed and sickered and bonded in place um, so that we can put the ceiling panels up tomorrow. So allow me to just show you the principle. Each one of these metal ribs, which has been prepped and painted and is now in good condition, we've got this lath on this side, we can screw up because we can put a screw on this side. and Brilliant, lovely. But the one the other side, obviously, unless we drill all the way through the piece of wood and out the other side, which we're not going to do, uh, we're just going to bond it up on that side. Um, either way, there'll be a pig to get back down, but they, they are removable if we ever need to get behind them. The sink makes a really good work, mate. <laughs> Uh, using the welding clamps to hold it up um, and then when we've when we've actually got all the pieces of wood cut and clamped into position then we can break out the uh, the sticks all um, no more nailsy bonding stuff so we've now got some bits of wood <laughs> glued up to the ceiling in the pilot house so we can start thinking about putting up uh, the ceiling panels again um, so as you'll remember, the reason this all came down is because we've got a load of metal work to do and you can't do welding and metal work on the roof of the pilot yeah, house. Mainly for insulation. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. So we've, we've, um, we've uh, taken the ceiling down, we've uh, re-insulated it all, we've done some repairs around the hatches, we've resealed and removed all the hatches, uh, which now don't leak. Actually whack another layer in. Yeah, we, we've got room, if you look here, we've got room for another layer of this uh, insulation stuff. So we are today putting up some panelling in the ceiling of the pilot house. Um, I'm very determined that I want to put the panels up in such a way that they can be taken down easily. Um, I, I can't stand having panels glued or pinned or screwed up in such a way that you can't then get behind them because it's a steel boat and it's going to be an ongoing maintenance thing. So every panel that we put up, I want to find a way to make it so that it's reasonably easy to get behind uh, and we're starting with the panel in the middle here so every panel is individual and uh, we're going to have obviously this uh, mahogany sapili trim I've just knocked a piece up there to make sure that we're getting everything lined up right but the trim pieces don't hold the panels up the trim pieces are cosmetic so you can take the trim piece down nothing falls on your head and you can undo the screws and nothing falls on your head and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have each panel by the time I've finished will have screws holding it up and velcro the velcro is there so that you can put the panel in place 
put the screws in and nothing falls on your head when you're trying to mess about with it and when you if you do need to get behind this panel to do some wiring or find a drip that's leaking from a fitting on the coach roof you can undo the screws and the panel doesn't fall down and then the velcro just keeps it up temporarily so we've got a load of this um kind of sapili tongue and groove off ebay cheap 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 a whole stack of it and it's really really nice look at that beautiful it's either mahogany or sapili or oroco or something i'm not enough of a wood person to know but um what i'm doing is uh, it's tongue and groove i haven't done it with this piece i will do but i'm stripping off the tongue from one side and the groove from the other to make some nice um slats look that go just nicely over the joins in our ceiling panels and then I'll run those through the router and bevel the edges and it will look quite nice and then these will be covered I think we have decided we were just talking about earlier I think we are going to cover them in some sort of material of some sort uh, that's wipe clean but uh, not shiny well, well we'll make a decision on the material this is the layout of the pilot house ceiling roof head thing whatever Captain Q can correct me on my terminology. Headliner? Um, no, the headlining, it's not that though, is it? It's something else. Uh, somebody tell me what the correct term is for the, the headlining in the pilot house of a boat. It's not headlining, that's in a car. And we're just figuring out what lights we want where. We're thinking two here, two here, uh, two here and two here. Little spots. The little spots they are, little tiny ones. One largish one there, one largish one there. We want them individually switchable so we can turn on the lights to the pilot house but not have all of them on at once. And um, we want the ones like we have in the ambulance which are, they've got a rocker switch, um, in fact they're touch ones they are, but we want ones that with rocker switches ideally that are red one side and white the other so you can turn them red or white light. Uh, that would be nice. I mean, it doesn't oh, necessarily have to be in the unit individual it could be that one line has a rocker switch could do yeah but if you just wanted to literally have one light on in well, the pilot house reading wood. lights for that yeah that's true yeah okay but we're doing this so that we don't argue about the layout of the paneling mm. in the roof later <laughs> So now we've just got an awful lot of tidying up to do. There's sawdust everywhere and you don't need to see us hoovering up sawdust. Uh, we've got quite a lot done in today's episode, I think. Uh, we've started work on the pilot house ceiling. We've got the panels up uh, and we've got a good idea of the layout and what adjustments we need to make and what's going to work and what isn't. We've started work on the bowsprit uh, replacement and I've offered that up to the boat and we've got a good idea of what's going to work and what isn't. And we had a fantastic weekend for Jack's birthday. So thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We hope this week, uh, this week's episode didn't make you cry. I think last week's episode was a little bit uh, emotional for a lot of people and it was for us to make as well. So just before we finish the episode, guys, we wanted to show you our new t-shirts uh, with the amazing artwork by Amanda Jackson. Amanda Jackson, so you can have a look in the description. We've got a link to her website so you can see more of her work. And if you click the other link in the description, it'll take you to our online shop where we've got t-shirts and mugs. Mugs. And what else are we going to have? We can have beanies, sweatshirts, all of the goodie stuff. Yeah, and lots of other good stuff uh, coming up. And don't forget, you can also, uh, if you want to buy a copy of my album, just send us an email to turner.andy at hotmail.com. In the meantime, thanks very, very much for watching. I hope you have a great week now. Yeah, so click Bye. like and subscribe and leave us a comment and all that good stuff. Bye. Bye. See you next time.